Praise the Lord, everyone. Wonderful to be in the house of the Lord again this morning and to lift up the name of Jesus and to be able to give him thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. We are still living through these times of COVID-19 and it may be times of hardship, but God is still doing a wonderful work in our midst that if we just continue to stay faithful and continue to keep our eyes upon the harvest, that truly God is going to do something in our day and age. Hallelujah. We can rest assured of that because His promises are sure. Hallelujah. And with the help of the Holy Ghost here this morning, I've entitled this message, uh, Salvation. If we can just enter into a word of prayer and lift up the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. Father, we just call upon your name this morning in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you will just continue to move upon us. Lord, that you'll bring the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, that you will direct this message the way that you will. Have your free course in this place, Lord God. We magnify you, Lord Jesus, and we call upon your name in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. And Christ grew up in a, in a city called Nazareth. And there the child began to wax great. And he went into the synagogue and the people marveled at his teachings on the Sabbath day. And he began to read a scripture from the book of Isaiah, the prophet saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And there the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened unto him. And he began to say unto them, This day is a scripture fulfilled in your ears. You see the prophets foretold of the coming of the Messiah. The children of Israel were now seeing the Lord face to face. And yet some doubted, looking upon him in unbelief, but expecting that the Lord would have been of great stature and appearance. And, but yet a humble God came in onto the scene, born in a manger, and was rejected of men. And the children of Israel railed upon him in unbelief and sold him into the hands of sinful men, crucified and marred, but yet faithful and true. Hallelujah. And in John chapter 14 and Jesus, uh, verse 6, And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if ye had known me, ye had known my Father also. But hence you know him and have seen him. And this is exactly what Philip was saying unto the Lord. He said, you know what, Jesus, if you just show me the Father, it will suffice me. I will be content with that, Lord. And Jesus saith unto him, Philip, knowest thou not me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe not. And you see, this is the very core of the foundation must be built upon faith. Doubt is... Doubt comes through unbelief. You see, when we, when we look upon certain things, it's not the way that we just perceive the things. See, God is wanting to take us to a new dimension in the realm of the Spirit. He wants us not to look through the eyes of the, the physical, but He wants us to look through the eyes of a supernatural. And this is why He said to Philip, Can't you see? That I am in the Father and the Father is in me. It needed that step of faith. Jesus wanted Philip to understand that Christ was the hope and the liberation of Israel. The mediator between God and man and the atonement and the plan of salvation. And Philip looked upon Christ and he was, as he was seeing the Father face to face. What a great time it would have been to be around the Lord at that time and to see the very God, the, 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 the Son that was made in the image of the invisible God, the God that had never been seen from creation, was now shining in the face of Jesus Christ. 
of Christ. Hallelujah, the Son of God. You see, and the foundations of the world, the incarnate, the Son, who was, who was brought forth as a mediation for sin, and God could only pay that price and the ransom of sin. There was nobody found in heaven worthy enough to be able to unloose the seven seals. But one having prevailed the line of a tribe of Judah. And you see in 2 in second Corinthians, this is where the God of the, this world hath blinded the eyes and the minds of them that, would be, that believe not. Lest the light of a glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should, should shine upon them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves for your servants for Jesus' sake. For God commanded his light to shine out of darkness, and has shined in our hearts to give light to the knowledge of the glory of God by the face of Jesus Christ. It's only in the Son that we can truly see the Father. You cannot see the Father without the Son. Because there needs to be that atonement. There needs to be the incarnate spirit of God dwelling inside the Son as a, as a sacrificial offering. Uh, hallelujah. To be able to place a veil uh, that God wouldn't just consume us because of sin. But we're so thankful to the, our Lord Jesus Christ that he gave, his, he gave his body as a veil and as a covering just like with Moses. And when the glory of God shone upon him, they had to cover his face because the children of Israel could not, hallelujah, they couldn't see that glory. It was too much light. That their eyes would just burn and be consumed. But they covered Moses' head. Even so, with us in our day and age, we need the covering of the Messiah. Hallelujah. We need the covering of the Messiah to be able to cover us from all our sins, that we may be able to stand before God and see Him face to face. The word atonement means to bring back, to buy back, uh, to pay the debt for sin. For we know that the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the Father sent the Son Sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved and to bring life from the dead. And to bring us into a relationship, hallelujah, with the eternal omnipresence of God, hallelujah, and the soon coming king. In Romans chapter 2 and verses 12, he said, For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. But as many as have sinned by the law shall also be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the work. Being dead as to sin, we should no longer live after sin. Because now we have the liberty and we have the power through God to be able to mortify the misdeeds of the flesh. For we know it's not the hearers of the, of the law that are justified before God, but the doers of the law, they shall be justified. How do we overcome sin? Well, we've got to keep about the master's business. And whilst we keep upon the things of God and we meditate upon the scriptures and we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and we go forth bearing precious seed, we're not just going to fall into the spirit of unbelief. If we keep our minds focused on the things of God, we will continue to press through in the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 3 and verses 21. For now the righteousness of God without the law is made manifest, being witnessed of the, by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all them that call upon his name that believe that there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being now justified freely by His grace, that we have redemption through Jesus Christ, whom God has set forth as appropriation through faith in His blood to declare the righteousness and the remission of sins that were passed through the forbearance of God. 
<clears throat> you see, once we were born in sin, we were shaped in iniquity. But now because the forbearance of God as sin has now passed away from man, he said, you know what? I'll forgive you of your sin. I will remember your sins no more. And if you, unless we repent, we shall all likewise perish. But if we repent, you see, that's the very key, that God will remember our sins no more. And the Bible says that he will separate our sin from the east, even visible to the west. And so, so it is that God will remember them no more because he's covered it by his veil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And but to declare, I say the righteousness that, the, that they might be justified through the justifier of him which believeth on Jesus. We need to continue to have our faith. Uh, the word mixed in with faith to profit us and to continue to be established in the very things of God and not falling aside into unbelief. But continuing therein. And we shall reap if we faint not. Hallelujah. Because God has manifested himself in us. You see he said the kingdom of heaven is nowhere to be found but it lies within you. We don't need to go about everywhere trying to work it all out. But God's got something great that he will accomplish. If we just continue to walk. Step by step. Hallelujah. Relying upon the hand of the master. If we lean not into our own understanding, but in all our ways we'll acknowledge him. He will direct our path. Faith must be mixed in with the word to profit. For without faith it's impossible to please God. Belief is the byproduct of studying and hearing the gospel and understanding the word and that brings growth. You see, the, the disciples of Israel, they continued in the scriptures, showing his salvation from day to day, renewing their minds with the word of God. The, the only thing that they had in those days that was most prevalent was the word of God. And this is why they began to pin out the word of God you see, today we've got this word that's been given to us. It's alive, it's, it's powerful, it's mighty. But yet we don't have to write it and scribe it all out as they did and rely upon the, uh, the direction of the Holy Ghost to write out the scriptures. We have the very word and the oracle of God given to us. And he says that it's line upon line, precept upon precept. And the scriptures have no private interpretation. And God has given us the word that is able and to be able to save us and be able to redeem us out of a world of gross sin. And be able to plant us upon a rock. Hallelujah. That we shall be a sure foundation. That, Christ, that we can build our sure foundation upon Christ Jesus. Who has set us at liberty. Who has forgiven us. And redeemed our sins. We ought to be strong in grace. Not being double minded. Not wavering. For the price was paid once and for all for sin. Condemned sin in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. That the righteousness of the law now might be fulfilled in those. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. We ought not to fall after the condemnation of Satan. For we know that Jesus crushed the head of the serpent. Gave the victory to the church. Uplifted us, hallelujah, out of the law of sin and death. We should have paid that price for sin. But thanks be to Jesus Christ who made it all possible. Hallelujah, that we would not be accounted with them uh, that fall after uh, unbelief as the heathen. Hallelujah, we ought to be believing we are a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. And that we should show forth the praises of him who has brought us out of darkness. And into his marvelous light. You are a distinct people church. Hallelujah. Different. Diverse. And this is why it's important that we ought to continue in the faith. And continue to love others. And inspire the people in the ways of God. <clears throat> but believing the word. That you may prosper. And that it may go well with you. <clears throat> the with. Where there's the absence of truth, there is a lie. The Apostle Paul has said that I may preach the whole gospel. And that it is enough to have 
it's not enough to have partial truth. The word must be mixed in with faith to profit us. We must have the whole doctrine of Christ, as the Apostle Paul said. He said, I don't want to just preach to you a partial doctrine, but I want to preach to you the whole doctrine of Christ, that it may go well with you. <clears throat> All humility and every living creature identifies Sorry, uh, reiterate, all humanity and every living creature <clears throat> identifies with the Almighty God. Such a sophisticated, uh, hallelujah, all-knowing, uh, all-powerful and almighty God. All of creation understands that God had created the, the, the very world into existence. Where they may not believe that it was Jesus. But somehow they believe that there is a supreme ruler, a, a sophisticated God that somehow spoke this world into existence and he just formulated. But we can be acquainted, hallelujah, with our God. And he wants to have fellowship with us. I don't believe that God would not want to have fellowship with his creation. God created us to worship him. God created us that we may be able to uh, feel God's presence, enjoy His privileges, enjoy His blessings. Hallelujah. And that we would have that relationship ultimately with our Savior. You see, for 2,000 years and beyond, 7,000 years as we're living today, the prophets of old foretold of the coming of Christ. And, and you see, when Jesus came in on the scene 2,000 years ago, hallelujah, he came and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And this message now has passed from generation to generation to generation to generation. And now we have the very word that has been, hallelujah, from the prophets of old. Now we can experience this Messiah by the gift of faith. You see, the Bible says... Where, where, this is why the, the, um, the Apostle Paul said, you know, many would have desired to see. The prophets of old said, many have desired to see the coming of the Lord and did not see him. But yet, a blessed are you when you have that faith to believe and not to have seen. They had Jesus back in their days. Hallelujah. And some even doubted. But now we are, have passed from, this, uh, from the present, uh, uh, from the future. And now we another generation comes through. And now because we are a generation, now that we can have and we can hold this gift called faith. Uh, hallelujah. Because the Bible says uh, that God has placed the gift of faith into each and every mind, every heart, every soul has that seed of faith. But you see, it's not until and until we begin to work upon that gift of faith that it begins to grow and develop into that strong, mighty, hallelujah tree that where when the roots go down like the cedars of Lebanon and, you know, we can rejoice in the God of our salvation and truly believe upon God through only the gift of faith. But faith must be mixed in with the word to profit. Back then they had Jesus with them. And Jesus sent out the 70 disi 72 disciples. And they went out two by two and they began to preach miracles following them. But in this day and age, it's going to take just a little bit more. And we've got to step into a realm of the supernatural. Luke 10, 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the, from the wise and the prudent, and thou hast revealed it unto babes. Even so, Father, it seemed good in thy sight that all things that are delivered to me of my Father, and that no man knoweth the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are your eyes, for they see the things which you see. 
You see how beautiful it would have been just to see Jesus face to face and have that have that uh, the, the, the omnipresence of God who, who fills all time and space and just dwelling around you. Hallelujah in the spirit of love because God is love. And having that manifest the spirit of love and dwelling around us and just being around us, we can feel the presence of God. And even in our day and age, we can still have that very uh, spirit of love. If we just tap in by the Holy Ghost, we can begin to feel the presence of God in such a powerful way. But blessed are your eyes. And this is what he said to his disciples. Blessed are your eyes. For they see the things which you see. For I tell you that many prophets and many kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. That the prophet and the king, the kings of the Old Testament, might believe through the redemption. You see, they had to do their sacrificial offerings. They had to offer up uh, bullocks upon the altars for the priests. And they had to offer up uh, uh, lambs, young lambs, uh, uh, and they would take the blood and they would begin to sprinkle it upon the altar. They had to work upon their salvation. But here when Jesus comes in, into the New Testament, he revealed himself to his disciples. Chose out to himself twelve. <clears throat> and one of them turned back. But isn't it such a wonderful thing that we can see that how God would marvelously call out 12 disciples, give them blessed privileges and say, take up your cross and follow me. And then they went out and they began to do wonderful miracles and, and, and signs were following them. <clears throat> and they inherited their promise. We must keep our eyes upon the Messiah. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the hope of our eternal glory. Where eye hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the minds of men what God has prepared for those who love Him. We are challenged that we will just continue to remain upon our God. Even in the midst of the times of His COVID-19, we don't need to worry about all these, uh, these uh, hardships. You see, growth comes through hardship. If you're not suffering, you will not enter into the kingdom of God with Him. But they only entered into the kingdom of God through much tribulation. Because we know that tribulation works patience. Patience, experience, and experience hope. Hallelujah. But knowing the very purpose of the Messiah would be fulfilled. And that we came and preached the word. With miracles and signs and wonders. Hallelujah. The, ununderstand, the, the things that could not be understood. How the miracles could happen. You see, because it's not <clears throat> through the essence of humanity that miracles can come. We were born in this human tabernacle. <clears throat> and you see, doubt is prevalent. Why? Because we're in the physical. But we need to step into the supernatural. We know that we have limitations. And can only understand so much. But when he appears again, we shall know him. And we shall see him. And we shall be with him. Hallelujah. Whose nails were driven through his hands. And hung upon that cross and gave himself, hallelujah, willingly that we would not be, uh, we would not die, but we would live. And he brought life from the dead and gave us all things, hallelujah, and that we may possess all things. The Roman soldiers railed upon him and they nailed him to the cross. And you see, they came, the soldiers came. And they break the legs of the first. 
and that the others which were crucified with him. But they did not touch the Lord's legs as the prophecy would be fulfilled. But they, I, could un, I could understand that when they were looking upon him, they couldn't understand uh, this Messiah. And they said, you know what? You, you spoke about all these things, Jesus. But why don't you just come down from that cross? Why don't you just show yourself? If you truly say that you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. Show us that you are truly God. But yet he still hung upon that cross right to the very end that he gave up his breath. And he said, oh, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Father, Father, why have now you forsaken me? And it wasn't until that very last moment that he gave his breath and that, that, that the Son had unveiled his flesh for us that the price of sin and death would have been paid and conquered upon that, Christ, uh, upon that cross of Calvary. You see, it takes only a humble God uh, to be able to step out and be able to pay the price for sin. Hallelujah. And that he gave himself. Even when we did not deserve it, we turned our backs on God. We'd forsaken the very way of truth. We didn't understand. We, we grew up in ignorance. But because the God of creation who said, these are my people, who were once not a people, but now have become a people. Hallelujah. And that we should become a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who has brought us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You know what? A child of God, he snatched us out. He brought us from, uh, from life from the dead. Hallelujah. Who could do that but only one? Jesus Christ. And we give him glory. We give him honor. We praise him this morning. We thank the Lord for everything that he's doing in our midst. is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. John 19 and 32. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other that were crucified with him. But they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, and they brake not the legs of him. But one of the soldiers who with the spear pierced his side, and forthwith there came blood and water, that he saw and bare record that his record was true. And that he knowing that he saith are true, that they might believe. You see, and the soldier didn't understand that it was that they were that they were crucifying the Lord of glory, that they were crucifying the Prince of Peace. But it wasn't until that blood, when he thrust his spear through his side, the Roman soldier, that he understood because the blood now sprinkled upon him and his eyes were now from being closed, were open. Hallelujah. Now I'm not talking about eyes physically. I'm talking about his spiritual eyes from now being asleep to now understanding that it was God that was manifesting himself to him in such a, a beautiful way through his covenant and that the Roman soldier understood that, that, that they pierced the Lord, hallelujah, that was prophesied right from the very Old Testament, it was now on that cross, hallelujah, and humbled, but yet uh, he brought life from the dead, hallelujah, Jesus. And that he saw that his record was true, and that he saith that they might believe. For these things that were done of the scriptures that it might be fulfilled, a bone of him should not be broken. And again another scripture saith, and they shall look upon him in whom they have pierced. And he understood that they had crucified the Lord, the Messiah. The Lord, the Lord God uh, loved and manifested uh, himself to his creation in such a splendorous way. 
He said that my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As far as the heavens are from the earth, so is my ways from your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. But he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. In Acts chapter 1 and verses 3, To whom also he showed himself alive after these passions by many infallible proofs being seen of them. For forty days, speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and they assembled together uh, with them and commanded them. And this is Jesus. He appeared back unto them. And you know what? He assembled together and he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father. You see, John the Baptist said, I hereby baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And this is why he said, go and tarry. What does it mean to tarry? It means to stick around for a little while. And you know what? And you're going to receive that very gift. Hallelujah. That God is going to come to us in such a special way. Because the Old Testament did not receive it. They only seen the, the, the promises of God afar off. But now we have the inherent nature that, that by being buried with Christ in baptism, we can rise again to the newest of life. The old things will pass away and behold, all things will become anew. And that we can be partakers of the Holy Ghost, having escaped the corruption of this world from lust. And now bringing life from the dead by one Jesus Christ. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Of the earth. And, I, and when he had spoken these things uh, for a while he began. Uh, hallelujah. And he was taken up. Right in their very eyes. They were looking upon him steadfastly. And there the Christ was now glorified and taken up in an ascension. And while they looked upon him steadfastly toward heaven. As he went up, behold, two men in white apparel as stood upon the sides of them. Hallelujah. And said unto them, which, will, which also said, Why ye men of Galilee stand here gazing into the heaven? Why do you just stand here and gaze into heaven? For the same Jesus who now has ascended up. Hallelujah. He shall come back to you. Mark 16, 16. And afterward he appeared unto the eleven, and he sat at meat with them and upbraided them for their unbelief. This was prior to his ascension. You know, our church, we don't need, we don't need to uh, uh, fall into unbelief. We need to keep continuing on and keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Because one day he's going to come back. Hallelujah. And his feet shall touch the Mount of Olives. Hallelujah. And he and we shall be with him and we shall know him in the power of his resurrection. And we shall understand this whole mystery that was never understood from the Old Testament. And, and we can only now see through a glass darkly. But one day we're going to see Jesus face to face. Hallelujah. What a glorious time it would be to see Jesus Hallelujah, standing with us, just as he did with the disciples. And we can feel the power of his love and our hearts can be made manifest. Hallelujah, and to the one true Savior who brought us and redeemed us from life from the dead and brought us back into glorious liberty and that we should not be condemned with the world, but that we should be saved through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And thanks be to our God forever and ever. And everybody said... Amen.